Hello. Sharp-eyed viewers and sharp-eared listeners will notice that I am without Sasha. Uh, we decided we'd do uh, just the odd solo recording because uh, we thought it would free us up and it might make things a little bit interesting. And so it's just myself and Professor Mike Bailey who is speaking today and we're talking about the retraction of his paper by Springer in, uh, in recent uh, weeks. So I hope you enjoyed this mini episode with myself and Professor Mike Bailey. Hi, I'm Stella O'Malley, a psychotherapist in Ireland. And I'm Sasha Ayad, an adolescent therapist in the United States. Through in-depth interviews, personal stories and psychological exploration, we probe the gender landscape within contemporary culture. And we consider the implications of prioritizing personal identity over other aspects of the self. This is the thinking person's take on gender. Join us as we look at gender from a wider lens. Well, hello, Mike Bailey. We have you back because of something that we spoke about in the last episode, and I honestly didn't think would happen, and it has come to pass. So thank you for coming back and giving us your time. Could you tell us what has happened since we last spoke to you? Sure. It's always a pleasure to see you. It's too bad it didn't turn out differently. Uh, so um, in March this year, I, along with uh, Su Susanna Diaz, published a paper called uh, Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria Parent Reports of 1655 Possible Cases in the academic journal, The Archives of Sexual Behavior. That article was uh, immediately attacked by activists who got the attention of both the International Academy of Sex Research, which is the organization associated with that journal, as well as the uh, giant publisher Springer Nature Group. Uh, and they, Springer, did an investigation. They were allegedly, reportedly concerned both the, with the methodology of our article and with ethics. Um, and they uh, announced uh, first in April, I think it was, that they intended to retract our article. When I say they announced, they informed me and Susanna in an email. And I guess I announced on Twitter that this uh, was going to happen. And <clears throat> shortly before the episode that we did about this, uh, yeah. with some help from people at SEGM, Society for Ev Evidence-Based Gender Medicine, uh, I strongly appealed to the publisher and the publisher delayed retraction. Our appeal included both a correct logical argument, that is, that their reasons for retracting our article were preposterous, and also evidence that Springer Nature Group, the publisher, had published several, probably many other academic articles with the same problems that they were pointing to as reasons to retract our article. <clears throat> and could we just take this uh, opportunity to explain to people what those reasons are. I know them, but just to, you know, to the, the passing listener, what, what are the issues? Frankly, this is a trans activist, are, you know, uh, campaign, but what are the issues that they are saying that is that issue with your article? Yes. The reason ultimately given for retraction was the alleged lack of informed consent, especially telling parents, we, 
especially the lack of telling our participants who are parents uh, that we would publish our results in an academic article. This is preposterous because parents knew exactly what they were doing. It was very clear in the survey and only people who wanted to uh, see people are so upset they're uh, ringing sirens outside your uh... <laughs> we are gathering the crowds yeah, as we speak yes. Mike <laughs> so again uh, parents knew exactly what they were doing parents wanted attention to this issue that was the rationale given for the survey and at the end of the survey parents were told that when we got enough uh, responses, it would be published on the website of parents of ROGD kids dot uh, com. But uh, why should it matter whether it's published at that website or the Nature Springer website? Uh, published as published. Published as published. Is it's got to get into the public yes, domain. Yes. Yes. Uh, and as I said, uh, we found several other. <laughs> easily found several other examples of uh, studies that Nature Springer Group published that lacked that kind of notification, which is a silly requirement regardless. Plainly, they did this in order to make this paper go away. Uh, and why did they want that? Well, uh, first, uh, the activists were raising a stink. Second, even members of the allegedly scholarly uh, organization, International Academy of Sex Research, which I used to be a member of until I resigned in February because of exactly this kind of thing. They've become um, less of a scholarly organization and more of an activist organization. Uh, the Some of the leadership there uh, were siding with the activists and uh, they had uh, asked more or less the publisher to launch the investigation. Uh, also, it is very possible that Springer Nature Group, uh, the people we were uh, interacting with, themselves have an activist bent. I don't know this. I can't read into their minds. If you look at some of the uh, material on some of their uh, emails, uh, which, for example, Black Lives Matter is prominently uh, included. You know, I don't know why a uh, an academic publisher needs to be announcing anything about Black lives or transgender lives or anything like that. They should be, they should have as their slogan: "We publish good scholarly research." That should be their motto, but that is not their motto. The Springer Nature uh, Group, uh, their journals, have had several egregious examples in which um, they have been highlighting activism over scholarship, including uh, the uh, journal Nature Human Behavior, in which they uh, wrote an editorial saying that um, they were going to weigh whether any uh, articles might conceivably harm favored groups. And if so, they wouldn't publish it. This led uh, some prominent intellectuals to say they would no longer review articles for that journal. Now, again, Springer Nature Group publishes many journals. The one at issue here is Archives of Sexual Behavior. I want to talk briefly about the activism against our paper that uh, can be plainly seen by an open letter uh, published by these activists who uh, focused mainly 
on the ideas that they don't like. And also, most of all, on the editor of the Archives of Sexual Behavior, who is uh, Dr. Kenneth Zucker, Ken Zucker, who you have interviewed on your podcast, I believe. Uh, and they wanted him gone. They wanted him fired. The reason, the reasons why they want Zucker gone is, uh, are first that he has published articles that they don't like. Zucker is a very open-minded intellectual. He p- likes to publish discussion. He likes to publish debates. I have both benefited and been the target of such debates. He has published at least 10 articles, letters, commentaries, criticizing me <laughs> and my ideas on yeah. archives. Yeah. Um, you could argue that, that like Zucker is the perfect editor. He he really does just want debate. He doesn't, he really does just want people to show me the evidence, bring out studies. That's where he, he lies, if you follow me. That's where he emphasizes. I entirely agree. He is the perfect editor and rare in these days. The other reason they don't like Zucker is because um, clinically, his approach has been to try to help gender dysphoric individuals get over their gender dysphoria, ideally without medical treatment, without transition. However, he has always been entirely open to the idea that this won't always work and some individuals will need medical transition, at which point he will help them. He's not a medical doctor, but he will help them um, get medical treatment. Uh, But that's not good enough for the activists. Uh, I should say that one piece of good news at the end was that the activists were not successful in getting Zucker removed as editor of Archives of Sexual Behavior. He remains editor there and, to my knowledge, uh, is not at risk of being removed. However, uh, on June 14th, uh, our article was officially retracted. What does this mean? I had never had an article retracted before, and so I didn't know. Well, one thing it doesn't mean is the vanishing of our article. Our article remains in exactly the same place it always was, on the website of the Archives of Sexual Behavior. And at least for now, it will remain there. It has, however, been stamped on every single page with the words, Retracted Article. That does not disturb me in the slightest. I now will wear those words on this article as a badge of honor. The article has received enormous attention, largely because of this controversy. Although I would say largely because of a thirst for knowledge about Rapid Onset Gender Dysphoria. The article has been viewed 105,000 times as of this morning. For an academic article, that is an enormous number. Far more than any other article, (laughs) recent article in that journal, believe me. (laughs) It uh, is ranked number 41 out of more than 400,000 academic articles of around that same age in terms of online attention. 
and that will only grow because I know of some things in the works. Wow. I would like everybody who hasn't looked at our articles to our article to go find it, download it, and read it. We think it's important, and it remains as true as it ever was. We hope you're enjoying this episode of our podcast. We work very hard to maintain high-quality content for the show. To take an even deeper dive and support the show, join our listener community for access to exclusive content, practical tools, and resources supporting gender and identity exploration. We're so grateful to our sponsor, Genspect, an international organization which offers an alternative to WPATH, providing a range of education, resources, and supports to anyone impacted by gender distress, GenSpec unites many different organizations globally and gives voice to thousands of previously untold stories. For more info, visit genspect.org. And thank you to our sponsor, Rhyme. Rethink Identity Medicine Ethics is a non-profit organization dedicated to improving long-term care for gender-variant individuals. Visit rethinkime.org to learn more. And now back to the conversation. So effectively, you, t- just to, 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 thinking of the lay listener, you analysed something like 600 and, 1,655 um, parent kind of contributions online and retroactively analyzed them and said we're going to we're going to publish this um we and you said we'll publish on the the website of parents of or gd kids it turned out you made it actually into a peer-reviewed journal you decided to make it an academic study you published it on archives of of sexual behavior and there was an activist campaign against it and trying to trawl through your paper they tried to find something and the best they could find was, well, the specific permission sought was for publication on this website, not on that website, arguably. And uh, as a result, there is now retraction written on each page. And what occurs to me is, if I was writing an academic article today, can I, can I refer to your piece? And do I have to add in retraction in brackets or... Do, Can it continue on as a piece of research in the literature? Um, Thanks for asking, because that reminds me. So we published this article, Open Access. And open access is a way of publishing articles so that everybody can read them, not just academics. Most academic articles are published behind a paywall. If you, if, if lay people have ever tried to find certain academic articles, they have been unable. Uh, it's actually a disgrace because I hear it costs something like eleven grand to to open them. It's 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 a kind of a, a terrible it, 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 financial it, problem. It varies by yeah. journal. I, I believe uh, for this particular article, it was more like. Uh, 3,000 US dollars, about that amount, but it's a lot. Uh, And, you know, it shows you how much money publishers like the Springer Nature Group make. They also make millions of dollars selling subscriptions to university libraries. That's their main way of making money. Um. But publishing open access provides one with some privileges. One privilege that it gives one is it allows people to republish articles anywhere they want. We already have submitted the article to a new journal called um, Journal of the Open I'm sorry, Journal for Open Inquiry in the Behavioral Sciences, JOIBS. Uh, And it's under review. And, you know, I expect it will be uh, published because their uh, policy is to publish sound articles. (laughs) 
even controversial ones. Uh, and uh, I believe it can be cited both as an archives article and as uh, a uh, as the Joibs article. Joibs. Uh, I think whether one has to put retracted in brackets uh, would be something that an editor or a publisher decides and not uh, the author. Uh, but it, it okay. won't be retracted at Joibs. <laughs> so I, I, my preference is that uh, you, you cite both uh, places uh, every time you cite it. And please do cite it. Uh, we, yeah. we haven't yet mentioned this time. In my opinion, ours is the second major article about ROGD. The first was by Lisa Littman, initially pu published in uh, 2018 at uh, PLOS One. And the activists tried to get that canceled too. And uh, they did cause Lisa Littman some trouble, but it was not retracted. We need. Well, they caused a lot of trouble. They they reviewed it and they insisted on adding I don't know some table or something just to make the point. And it it it's tactics. It's 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 tactics that many people will put many people off seeking to publish in this area. Well, Somebody yeah. who right now writing a paper on ROGD will be very spooked by these this story. Well, that's right, and I, I think it's uh, useful to think about why activists are so threatened by ROGD. First, ROGD isn't real gender dysphoria. It, it, don't get me wrong. It is uh, a profound psychological problem, but it's not a problem by somebody who is truly transgender who has the kind of gender dysphoria that we've always understood. Rather, it is a socially contagious condition in which vulnerable youth, primarily but perhaps not exclusively natal females, come to falsely believe that they are transgender. And yet, they, um, yeah. Could I ask you there? It's a it's a very good point you're making about the these these are a very different presentation of gender dysphoria than has ever been seen in the world. I'm surprised you use the word truly transgender as opposed to truly experiencing gender dysphoria. Yes, the 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 ways of talking about these things can get uh, confusing, and and I might. You know, if you and I talked a bit, you might change my mind. <laughs> but yes, you're you're right. I, I think uh, transgender actually is an identity. And so I guess anybody who uh, says it and uh, is not lying, as these uh, people are not lying, uh, in that sense, they, mm -hmm. they can be thought of as truly transgender. But they do not have uh, the kind of gender dysphoria that we have ever seen before about 10 years ago uh, it is a cultural that typically led to medical transition. That's right. That's right. Sorry it, to it's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's a culture bound syndrome that it's very recent and hopefully it'll go away. <laughs> uh, now, you know, I've been speaking very uh, confidently uh and without any uh, academic, well, maybe putting my academic head on, I, which I will for a moment, um, I don't think that the research to date is adequate to clearly establish ROGD. We need better and bigger studies. Uh, however, academic to establish it as a diagnosis or as a culture bound syndrome or as a phenomenon, all, all of the above. Uh, that is, 
as a thinking person who who's in been you know in this world uh i believe rogd is the most promise promising hypothesis to explain the explosion in um referrals for gender dysphoria among adolescents especially adolescent girls during the past decade but we've only had two papers based on, you know, uh, targeted samples. So the research conducted to date, including Lisa Lippman's study and ours, do have limitations. For example, they have uh, bias samples. Both of us uh, explicitly recruited uh, groups who believe that this was happening to their children. Um, and they were both one-time studies. Um, and Lisa's was uh, a fairly small study. Ours was larger, but um, we definitely could use bigger and better studies. And uh, Lisa and and I and uh, Ken Zucker are all collaborating in a large long-term study we hope to launch this summer. Uh, and uh, we think it will answer many questions, many outstanding questions. But the activists don't want questions answered. They want questions silenced. They want all data silenced. Go ahead. And what are the questions outstanding? Because I, I, I'm afraid of all the scholars who are scared of researching it. I think it's extraordinary that in 2018, Lisa Lippmann, you know, brought out this seminal paper, groundbreaking. There's been so much discussion about it and a huge amount of silencing, but an awful lot of discussion. And it took until five years later before the next big paper on ROGD comes out, which is yourself. And that gets shut down. So it's it's quite obvious to me that scholars aren't studying it. And I'd love you to articulate some of the questions that desperately need answering for anybody who's thinking of doing a master's, because I know many, many people are, and is thinking of studying, you know, maybe they're doing a doctorate and they're thinking, dare I? One, I'd like them to dare. And two, I would love you to kind of put out a few questions that we really need answers so that people know what, what to be thinking about in this area. Okay. Uh, for example, both studies to date have relied only on parent reports. We need to get self-reports by the gender dysphoric adolescent and young adult youth as well. Uh, how well do those uh, agree with parent reports? For example, that will be interesting. Um, we need di different youth do different things, different families have different approaches from relatively um, encouraging of transition to relatively discouraging. How does that affect what the youth do? And how does that affect the long-term happiness and adjustment of the youth? Um, w there's an outstanding question that we uh, started talking about the last time, the possibility that many or most of the natal males in this group uh, are motivated by autogynephilia, uh, and we can we will be collecting relevant data regarding that issue as well. So th th that's three to start with. Big time. Big time. So what will happen now? You're going to get hopefully published by Jobs, and therefore the retraction loses its sting. Is that right? 
Um, so first of all, <laughs> the retraction is <laughs> not sting. Has no sting. <laughs> there, there, I, I would guess that the the massive reaction that we're seeing online, because you know there've been a couple of dozen articles and major essays published about this controversy, and almost all of them. Um, are questioning or criticizing the Springer Nature Group. I'm guessing that they may regret their decision and their uh, early uh, siding with the activists. I don't know that. Maybe I'm wrong. But I'm guessing it may make them hesitate to do this again in the future. Uh, republishing the article at uh, Joibs. Um, again, that's the Journal of Open Inquiry in the Behavioral Sciences, which is a new journal associated with SOIBS, <laughs> Society for Open Inquiry <laughs> in the Behavioral Sciences, that I helped uh, start. Um, I, th I think it will be... Um, an occasion to uh, remind people about the article. And yes, it will be published there without a retraction notice. It will not be retracted there. Uh, and Excellent. the more versions, the better. <laughs> so, uh, but I, 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 you know, I was definitely anxious early in this process because I was worried about Ken Zucker, who is somebody I greatly admire and think is important for the field. He's also a collaborator. He's also a friend. And I was worried that the publisher might go there because, as you know, Zucker lost a major job in 2015 when he was fired from the very important mm -hmm. gender clinic that he had helped found based on the criticism and for, of the same uh, activists. Uh, yeah, and for anybody who doesn't know, so in 2015, activists targeted Zucker, who was running the, the Canada's kind of main gender clinic, and um, he lost his job. And it, it was an extraordinary, one of the early, you wouldn't say it's an early cancelling, but it was certainly in my world an early, early of the second wave, arguably, of cancelling. And... Um, it was it was I would think there's a sting in when they canceled him because I'd say an awful lot of clinicians all over the world silenced themselves because they saw what happened to Ken Zucker. My fear is that would happen with your paper, that you're a toughie. You'll say there's no sting. You'll get it published somewhere else. You know, you're you're kind of well able for them. I would say there's untold people who are considering studying ROGD saw that retraction and have pulled away and are right now changing titles and changing their direction. It, I, the, the, that's my very big fear. There's, there's, you know, strong stalwarts like yourself and Zucker. And I'm very glad he's he's yet again lived through another targeted attack. He did end up getting something like 575,000 as an apology for the, the dreadful treatment he got back in 2015 when he inappropriately lost his job. He got targeted just just recently as a result. Is it just as a result of publishing your article or was there further to it? And certainly, again, it was scurrilous and unfounded and he's lived through it. Um, the occasion for the recent cancellation t attempt was our article's publication. However, um, there had been previous complaints about him back channel and including uh, in discussions among the International Academy of Sex Research membership. Uh, there are people in that organization and their activists who strongly dislike publication of articles whose ideas they don't agree with, <laughs> and including articles published alongside criticisms of those articles. The, these people just will not tolerate 
debate. They want surrender. So I, regarding uh, your concern that this is going to um, deter people from studying ROGD, I am, I think anybody who would be deterred by what happened to our article was already deterred. ROGD is, has <laughs> been uh, quite controversial uh, since before Lisa Lippman's uh, first article. And uh, there are people who are interested in the idea and who believe in it, who don't want to be publicly associated. Uh, I, there is um, somebody I know who's an excellent clinician and researcher who did not want to be included on an article that um, you and I are both co-authors on that will be coming out uh, hopefully before long. Uh, but that's okay. Um, it just takes enough of us doing research and, you know, uh, I, I think that <laughs> immodestly, I will say that the article that we, uh, I'm sorry, the research that we're about to uh, launch is very important and will answer most important questions in this domain. Brilliant. Okay, we'll let the scholarship prevail. Thank you very much, uh, Mike, for coming to speak to us again. It felt very important to get you back after this, just a, a dreadful kind of blight on Springer. For, for, for doing this and we thought it's just too important uh, that we, we just thought we have to highlight this point so thanks very much it's a pleasure as always Stella hopefully a better occasion next time yeah I hope so thanks for joining us this week on gender a wider lens listener support means a lot to us if you enjoy the show please like and subscribe on iTunes and leave a review for more information, visit widerlenspod.com. There you'll learn about joining our listener community, how to contribute to our show, and where to find us on social media. Our discussions are for educational purposes and are not intended as a substitute for mental health services. 